Excellent. Okay. So uh, tonight, tonight, tonight. Uh, I'm going to talk, talk a little bit about um, uh, really, you know, the questions that we're going to answer in um, in Atlanta. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm about 24 years in chiropractic, and uh, you know, all of us have our experiences that we go through. And um, I started in a pretty cool place. I'm, I have a degree in mechanical engineering, and I started in a place that that uh, the mechanics of chiropractic really made sense to me, you know, from the way that the upper cervical world was looking at it, of trying to write the head straight and balance and frame and magnum and words like vertical and orthogonal and those kind of things. Um, and, and I went into those camps and I learned a great deal of information of how the body worked. Okay. And what um, happened about 10 years ago is I got to a place where I was, I was doing good work, um, especially within the parameters of those, those techniques. And I had patients that came into my office that um, did not have resolution. And I just started asking questions. And this, this webinar tonight is really um, uh, 15 years of, of chiropractic and basically nine, 10 years of um, me asking questions and what I see now and the pictures that I see now. And we have, I've bounced all over the board because it's the way I've received the information. And, and the reason for that is because the um, reason for that is that um, you know the, the human body is is what I see now is it's a life force, and I don't see a bone out of place. And you'll see these X-rays that that are up. You should really try to to expand your screen to full screen so you can see the films. To some extent, when we talk a little bit about them. So, and also turn your mic off, please, especially if you're speaking Japanese. Hi. Okay, I shut them down. Okay. So, um, you know, the human body is, is, um, is, it's, it's not, um, what I used to see it as. I used to look at this and I'd go, wow, look at this, look at that. Number one, how it's leaning so far off vertical. I'm going to expand my screen here for a moment. Okay. Sorry about that. So, you know, from from a chiropractic point of view, if you want to be a purist in chiropractic, um, you can just look at each one of these spines and and just notice that they're not on center. And um you notice if if you if you take a moment that there's you know, there's a flow to them. And there's a flow and there's a damage to them. Okay. And um the cool thing about this is that especially as an upper cervical person, at least in my origins, is that I, I looked at X-ray and, and one of the things that I see now is even though I'm looking at an is an X-ray, and is that I'm not looking at just a bag of bones here anymore. Okay, I'm looking at a life force that is in significant distress, and that that really is the conversation of what I try to look at in my office in when somebody stands in front of me in front of it on uh, in you know i look at them i look at their posture I, I see the way the body is breaking down and what's 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 collapsing down towards earth because we live in a gravitational field and i look at the way that the body is flowing and what things aren't integrated um, i saw a gentleman today from south carolina who um started today because uh two, three visits ago his wife came in, has been to um, a fair amount of chiropractors. Around, I think they're probably around nine chiropractors and of all different sorts, upper cervically. And she's now here with me. And her husband started today. And uh, 
You know, I, I looked at him and I, I showed her and I said, do you see how this is in distress right here, talking about his left hip? And I said, you see here, up here in his shoulder, he says, yeah. She says, yeah, that's the shoulder he's always complaining about. I said, well, there's a reason these things are where they are, and there's a reaction by the, uh, the body because this is a, you know, it's a system that's trying, it's trying to support itself. And as chiropractors and, and in chiropractic, um, we say that we look at the spine, but we really don't look at the spine. We shouldn't be just looking at the spine, okay? We should be looking at you know, the global system of the whole body because we're posture people. We're not really spine people. I mean, you could say we're spine people, but if we're really talking that the spine is structural for the body and that's, you know, a limited conversation, but in chiropractic, you know, we're, you know, uh, we're more than the spine. The skeletal system is not just the spine. Okay. So um, tonight is a little conversation about, you know, where I'm at. So I can kind of get people, you know, in a little bit of a, an idea of what's going on for Atlanta and just current, okay, Cause so that we can get uh, really, uh, you know, a nice conversation going there. And, and my feeling is at this point is, is, is these are the things that we should be talking about now in chiropractic, okay? We've talked about a bone out of place, okay? But we should be looking at the current tensegral anatomy and physiology is that there is a biostructure that is um, – pretty much across the board um, in everybody's camp says that the human structure is tensegral, meaning it's, 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 it's expanding open. Okay. And it has an anatomy to that. Okay. There's an anatomy discussion to that. If that's the case and we are talking posture and we are the people that are trying to help posture, nobody else is trying to help posture. Everybody else is trying to just help pieces and, you know, make your back feel better. We, we at least see a, a connection from the pelvis up to the head. Okay. So um, we at least look at you know, the whole thing or, or a part of it, you know, a main part of it. And that part is not a pile of just bone on bone on bone on bone. It's a system that is expanding. And there is an anatomy and a physiology that if you look at this picture, this is a textbook picture of, of a nice sagittal plane and a nice frontal plane. And you notice one is straight and one is curved. And there's a reason for that. And as chiropractors, we should understand that because we are structure people, but we also are functional people. For function, we talked about the nervous system. Right? The nervous system is functional. So um, nobody sees this picture in their office. Why? Because it doesn't exist, okay? This is probably made by Mattel or something. It's not real, okay? Because I've never seen this in my life. I've never seen anybody this straight and that curved, okay? So, and the reason for that is everybody's had some trauma, okay? And one of the first things that we should understand is how the body responds to trauma, okay? In, in live terms, Okay, um, we have a pelvis, and if it gets hit off to the right, and there's trauma right to the left, how should the body respond? I mean, we're a nervous system, so the body has a writing reflex, and it tries to put the body up on top of it. So what's normal? And then what are normal numbers? Okay, and what are we then going to strive for, and how do we support it? Kind of that where, why, when, how stuff. Okay, so these are the conversations that I see us having in chiropractic, um, hopefully one day we'll be ready for them. We're starting them, and I'm sure uh, other people will come on to join us and others will branch off from, you know, what we're talking about here. But it starts with a 10 Siegel system and understanding how that works, how that breaks down, and how then it responds, okay? And, and the reason for that is very simple, okay? Because really what happens here is when the human body gets traumatized, what happens? And it's very simple, is the body has to sacrifice stability for flexibility, okay? It has to. Excuse me, that has to sacrifice flex of, yeah, stability. It sacrifices, excuse me, the flexibility of the body, okay, by overstabilizing it. That's really the better way to say it. So these pictures that you see here are pictures where the human body has been damaged. It's neurologically responding. 
in a gravitational field, and it is locking itself up so that it doesn't fall over, and that at the same time, it has to move. So something's got to give, okay? And what gives is what? We start having people coming in with pain syndromes. So, you know, what I see is when somebody walks in the office, and what I want to be able to share with you, especially initiate that and, and talk further about that for some, is in October, is you can look at somebody and you can see where the system is having distress, the whole thing. Okay? It's, it's, it's not rocket science because it's, it's measurable. There are normals. There is damage. And you can see the areas where the people are in distress. You can look at the pe people here. Okay? And if you don't deal with it, it just keeps breaking down. Okay, that's a fact. Okay? And if you're dealing with it in a way that you're not creating stability and you're kind of moving things around, guess what happens? People that are patients in your office all of a sudden have, you know, uh, the barn goes on fire. Okay? Everybody's had that, me included. Okay, why? Because we're not having a conversation about how to restore this because we're not even having a conversation about tensegrity. Okay. So we have a tensegral model that breaks down. We need to understand how that happens. Identify in people where there are problems. Okay. And start having structure functional conversation. And it starts really with, you know, three branches of conversation. And that is, you know, the biomechanics. Okay then how do we apply it, and then how do we create um, stability? Sorry about the typo, but I did this about two hours ago. So this, each person here, take a look at them and look at those listings down below, okay? I don't know who's on the call. I don't have that up, but, you know, if, if it's a first time or it's a second time or something like that, we have below is those letters and those numbers are relationships of the whole global system of the human body and how it's breaking down. Because when we have trauma, guess what happens? Something goes low. Gravity always pushes down. The problem is always the down problem. Okay, and then we have neurology that responds. Then we have neurology that fatigues. So these listings are really floor up conversations. And in, in chiropractic, we don't have that. We don't have that conversation. So structure people means the whole structure and then having a conversation about how to understand this and see where um, these problems are. And then we can move through the biomechanics. We can move through the application of it, of, of restoring that, and then seeing how the human body um, uh, can be uh, stabilized as well as possible. So that all starts with having some understanding of tensegral biomechanics, how, how, how the whole thing works, okay? So this thing gets traumatized and multiple traumatized. Look at um, number one, okay, the first one, far left, um, and it is leaning way off. Look at it. It's the whole body. It's got a left low hip. It's got a left spine. Let me get my little marker activity here. Where is that stuff? Right here. Left low hip. And a left, left spine. And it's got a left shoulder and it's got a right head and neck. Okay, now I can look at that listing right off the bat and tell you that this right shoulder is failing. This person is falling out to the left. It's biomechanically not correct. Okay. I could go on to say that... Hold on. I'm trying to uh, see the listing down below. It's covered up by There we go. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, in number 1, it has a rotational twist of posterior 18 on the right. 
All right, energetically, that shoulder and platform is failing. Okay. It's got the major structures are on the left. The pelvis is on the left, the spine's on the left, and the shoulder is on the left, yet it has weight that has 15 pounds on the right. So for me, you know, the, the conversation is, and is understanding what, how that's happening, because it is happening right there. Okay, because if we don't understand what's happening, then we don't know the path out. All right. So we look at the posture listings of all of these. I mean, look, look at the third one over. He's all right with 28 pounds on the left, on the right, excuse me. Whole body's breaking down off to the right. Why is that happening? What do I have to do to help that person? Okay. What is the problem in the first place? Okay. So understanding where it's short and what the dysfunctions are, and then a very important piece of where are the wedges. Wedges are where the body gets damaged one way. And what does it do? It's a normal thing. All right. That's why we see a wedge in the spine. All right. Why is the shoulder low on the right and the neck is turning left? Because one is damage and the other one is compensation. All right. So there are wedges through the body, and there's wedges that are, this is a very cool statement that I'm going to make. There are wedges, wedges in the postural muscles, which are where? Shoulders downward, meaning the shoulders downward, the musculature there move our posture. The musculature in the neck and head are not postural muscles. Tip your head right to left. Your, your body doesn't move right to left, but move your shoulders right and left, move your pelvis right and left, move your spine right and left, move your legs right and left, your posture moves right and left, okay? So the postural muscles are the things that hold us up, and there are wedges there. There are rights and lefts. There are the neck muscles, which are the things that we're gonna contact, okay, that also have wedges, that don't control the postural muscles, but it's from there that we have to access and release the postural muscles based on these wedges, based on what's short, what's dysfunctioning, where there's weakness, where it's compressing, and understanding a system to release that. And it's an easy system to understand. I had to go you know, all over town to come almost back home with some, some concepts from my upper cervical world, you know? So uh, this, this, this technique has evolved and, and, and it incorporates, I don't want to say it consumes, but it's really a conglomeration of, of what all chiropractic talks about, okay? The pelvis to the head, to the feet, to the motion, to the upper cervical area, to the extremities, the tensegrity. So it crosses the borders and it, and it actually puts chiropractic to me back where um, I think it's supposed to be, which is the only people that are helping people with structure and function. Okay. Nobody, every, you know, the people that are talking about tensegrity, okay, and the anatomists and the physiologists, they're noticing it. Oh, this is tensegral, and they make models and that kind of stuff. And then, then there's the, you know, the physiologists and the medical doctors that are into tensegrity that are saying, hey, like Ingber, hey, it's affecting us at a at a biochemical level. And then there's chiropractic, and and, and in particular QSM3 chiropractic, that says, hey, you know what, we we can pull all that together and make a change there, which is you know, life changing. So um, these are the things that we're going to talk about is understanding the trauma, understanding the dysfunction, understanding this listing, and seeing these wedge relationships and how they are in the posture and how they're up in the neck and how to release them. And, and, and upper cervical looked at the wedge between the head and the atlas and the neck, which is really the head and the neck. Okay. And they would look at that and they, you know, different, different groups had different names for different relationships. You know, opposite angle, kink, type one, two, three, four, you know, so forth and so on. Okay, at least the vector-based people did. The, the uh, you know, the, uh, 
the BJ followers, you know, we're looking at the relationship of just C1, C2, okay, which is still a wedge in itself, okay, another wedge. Yeah. So it's, it's a cool thing because I'm looking at the global wedges and how to change them globally, okay, which is what you got to do first, okay. So um, moving on. So, uh, So the next conversation is after you say, hey, I see where this person has been structurally damaged, where they're neurologically responding, and guess what? Not just where they're neurologically responding, but where the neurology is now failing, and it needs a neurology on top of it or above it to compensate because it's failing. You follow me? Structure function. Failing function, function to compensate for the failing function. Multiple wedges back and forth. And understanding then what is the primary weakness, okay? Where this thing is primarily weak, okay? And that's a very important factor is you got things going right and left, right and left, right and left all over the place. And at the end of the day, you have to be able to support the weak link last, okay? And that starts with understanding that posture listing all the way through to that and then understanding that this is not a bone that you're pushing. I don't think about that concept at all anymore, that I am moving a bone. What I feel is I am, I am, there is a human body that, that is collapsing and shrinking. Okay? That is a fact because grandma always gets shorter. Okay? Skin droops from it, okay? It's like we're all put in a small, extra, extra, extra small suit, and we can't understand why we, our patients walk in and they can't understand and we can't relay information that why their shoulder hurts, why their joints are seizing up, why they have headaches, why their nervous system is this, why they have an osteophyte, why they have disc degeneration, why their pressure is high, why they have seizures, okay? because this system is breaking down. And it's meant to be up and open and alive and mobile. And that's a relationship of fascia and osseous relationship, okay? So we can't just look at this thing and say we're gonna push the bones because the model is not a bony model that's out there. The model that's out there is this is an expanding system, okay? Go push into your stomach. It pushes out. Okay, there's a pressure in it. It's a balloon system. It is an elastic system. And we have to look at it in an elastic way if we want to change it. Okay, so it's not like I'm going to push on C5 and I'm going to make a change there. In an elastic system like a balloon, when you push into a piece of elastic, it affects everything everywhere, first of all, and it also affects things in a different way. When you push into a balloon, where are the forces going? They're coming to you, right? Everything comes to you. You push in, everything comes to you. When you push a bone, everything is pushing away from you. Okay? So we have to look at this as an elastic system. And that's, that's really a cool conversation because putting energy into the anatomy of the body, C1, C5, and C7, does different things and that is a very important thing that we'll just talk about in a few minutes but the cervicals are a very cool place to deal with why do we even deal with the cervicals what's so great about the cervicals i mean not just that the brain stems there okay that's not a good answer because in a tensegral system a balloon system anywhere i push i affect everything okay okay there you go baby the problem is the, problem the balloon is. system is broken down and I can't just push into the balloon and have it expand. Okay, off I go. So the lines, the tension lines, okay, the telephone lines, not in a neurologic way and, and in just an energetic way, but literally in, a, in an elastic system, some of the rubber bands have been damaged. So forces can't go through to them to expand them, okay? So we have to touch somebody in multiple places. And the multiple places that I see that make sense 
is the cervical area because it's the only area that is three-dimensional. So the head, C0, C1, C2, C5, and C7, their motions are three-dimensional, and they are direct. So C7 and C5 are direct connects for the lower postural muscle, but C1 is not. It's a secondary attachment. Okay, but what's great about C, uh, the upper cervical area is that you got this big old head on there and it's three dimensional and you can use that thing like a crowbar to expand the human body. So the cervicals become a great place for a number of reasons. They're full range of motion and their attachments of the fascia that's down from the pelvis goes only one place. It goes from here to here. Okay, how do you know? because I believe in universal intelligence. And if you look at this, this is a big anchor, and so is that. And I don't believe we have big hips and big shoulder just so it looks good, okay? That's not what the deal is, okay? What the deal is, is they serve a purpose. So big things have big purpose. The big things in the cervicals, C7 spinous. C5 is in the middle of the arch. C2 spinous. C1 TPs. Okay, these, these, these are important landmarks because the human body's fascial system, the anatomy physiology, okay, is, 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 is uh, I tell my patients, I said, I, I said, this spot right here is the main anchor, like the main cleat on the boat that holds all the sails. All the sails tie into that. But guess what? There's also secondary ones and tertiary ones. So we need to understand that because if we're going to release the human body from this collapsing state, look at these pictures. These people are suffocating. They're collapsing. They have kinks and twists and bends. And between the x-rays and the postural listings from the posture IQ, you can paint a three-dimensional picture structurally, functionally, energetically in a gravitational field and understand where in the cervical area you can directly release those attachments range of motion wise and directly and within a tense eagle system and that's that's really what we have to learn okay so we have to, there's a kind of a dual purpose for us okay that i see now <laughs> and that is this system right here is in what, what do you think the musculature oh so chad you, the funny thing that you said to me you know, every one of you has probably touched somebody's neck, okay? Imagine you have. I don't know who's on the call, okay? If you had somebody or you palpated somebody or if you're doing this work or you're doing upper cervical work and you touch somebody on that neck, everybody's like in a rock. You feel these rocks all over the place. Well, it's not that their neck is tight. It's that their system, the whole human body for them to stand up has to lock down and activate so much so many muscles otherwise it's just going to fall over because we've lost our balance and our symmetry so the thing that we have to do and I, i'm really clear about this is if you don't release all or a large majority of the three-dimensional musculature from foot all the way up to the occiput that holds and activates that person that I call the neurologic block, if you don't release that, they are just going to lock up again. So you have to go beyond where they are and go through it and overcome it and release it, and then you have to expand it. It's like filling up a tire. It's like you're putting air in the tire and it's flat, and you're going air, 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 and all of a sudden you see it lift, okay, and lift, and lift, and lift. Okay, and there's a place in the human body where it just gives. And guess what that place is? That's where it's free. And that's free, that freedom, okay, is where the miracle is. Okay, that's where the miracle is. And I'm telling you that's doable on well into the 90 plus percentage of patients, if not everybody. They just need to cut it. You know, some people are just not willing to come enough you to stay to, to overcome it okay but you could overcome somebody's neurologic block in a visit 
I, I, I'm sure I do it on at least 80, 90% of the people I, I, I work on. Every new patient, I go right through it. Okay? And when they stand up, they start locking up again. But you start freeing up some stuff and give the body a chance. And guess what's happening? They start living again, man. Because they get to expand their body. Every cell of the human body, every organ, every tissue, every cell, the brainstem, the neurologic, live inside that structure. And think of any structure just compressing, compressing, compressing. Okay? Well, that's what we get to take care of. Okay, so here's the trouble. Okay? You got to overcome that lock. That is a difficult chore. Okay? But I'm, I, I'm going to do my best to show you how to do that. Okay? And I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a fair request that, it, that, you, that it'll happen. Okay? But you got to get to that place. And I, and, I, and I have a way to teach that, is how to overcome the neurologic lock. That's linear. Okay, but here's the second rub, is you got to understand this thing. And the why you got to understand it, and you can't just, it's not just an algorithm. And Friedman said, okay, there's the pattern, and adjust it on the right at C7 and do a, you know, a, you know, a, you know four Hail Marys. It's, it, that's not it. Is that we need to understand this thing. And the reason we need to understand it is because, one of the reasons we'll, that, I'm, that I'll say now is that everybody's got something on the right. Everybody's got something on the left. Look at these letters down here. Left, left, right, left, right, right. These are such sections of the body. This has got right, 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 left, left, all rights. Right, left, right, left, left, left. So when I touch somebody in some type of release sequence to directly open up, say, this side or open up that side, or open up that side, or open up this side, or open up that side, or whatever I have so that I can access these things directly, guess what I'm doing to the other things? I'm going against them. That is a big issue, okay? Because we're no longer truly and purely tensegral. We're tensegral and linear, okay? Because we're breaking down. So we have to be able to understand um, how to, to, and this is a, a, a very cool concept that, that I'm going to, that I'm going to give at the, uh, at the class is the class of, is uh, <laughs> had, when you are touching somebody on one side, there is a cervical release point that does not compromise anything on both sides. So it does not what? Students will become a lot more specific. Is there a question? Can you repeat, can you repeat that, Russell? Yeah. So, so like in this listing right here, Dennis. Let's say on this person, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay the left side first, okay? But if you notice that um, there's structures that are on the left and there's structures on the right. All right. So I can tell you that when I adjust this person on the left, C7, okay, is their, what I call their bend point, okay? So when I go into C7 on this patient, it is going to release all the left side that is the left, and it's going to le release all the right side from the left side at the same time. Okay. okay. Well, why would you start that guy on the left side? You're on all the way to the left. You start that guy left side up. You this say? Guy right here? Yeah. Yeah, I start him left side up. And I'm gonna, sh I'll show you why in 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 October. <laughs> but that ah. person is definitely yeah. side up first, and maybe doesn't even need the right side. Jonathan, you want me to go through this patient with you? I'll do it. 100%, man. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so this person is, a, is, is the most common patient you will see in your office, number one. Okay? And that is where they have had a, some sort of trauma um, probably 
below, like the, below the midline of the pelvis, like the femur head or into the legs down here. And it's gone boom, 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 boom. And it's created a wedge where this thing is doing this, and then it's doing that. Can you see that, Jonathan? Yeah, I see that. Okay, I'm going to draw this in blue for some reason. So it does something like that. Okay. So, so where is the function, first of all? I do function first. Oh, okay. Uh, right side. No, the function is this left side. The fu function, the left side, is trying to balance for that lower right weight. The whole left, that pelvis is dropping down on the left. Yeah, the spine is leaning left and the shoulder is leaning. You see that? Yep. Yeah, so the postural muscles are trying to balance that right weight that's you know, you go rock your hip over to the right and then bend your body over to the left. That's kind of what it, that person's doing over there. Right way, everything else going left. To get the neck and head for a moment, okay? Okay. Okay, because I care about posture. I don't care about what the head and neck are doing. The head and neck do a couple things for me. They tell me in this misalignment, my next conversation, is that that shoulder on the left side is dropping too low. It's going too far left. It's falling down on the left side. How do I know? Because the head and neck are going the opposite way. Okay? Okay. Now I have this. Boom, like that. That's what I got. Okay? So okay. I got to figure out, okay, and this is going to be the conversation, not the conversation for tonight, the conversation in October. Is first of all, I already gave the answer why I went left. The, stru the, the structure is, is on the right, needs that last, okay? Maybe, okay? From a module one perspective, function first, structure second. The function in this one is definitely the left side, and the right side below is failing structurally in the postural muscles, for sure. The neck and head are bending back only because the functional part is failing further and there is weakness in this right shoulder that person can hold it up so it's falling out this, this way and it's falling too far left can you see that yeah i see that okay so i want to get that left side out of there first and then i'm going to go after the right side and and i'm so so that's one conversation at module one module two conversation is if you notice that if I start left side up, I don't want to mess that hip up down there and just drive that thing over in tension either. And I certainly right. don't want to do the same thing with the head and the neck. So there is, a, is, there is going to be a, a conversation of where in the cervicals two things are going to happen. Position, meaning where, where, where in the neck, C0, C5, C7, that kind of conversation. Okay, of where I'm going to go in and what my line of drives are going to be above and below those points, that point. Okay, and that's called the bend point. Okay. So thank you. So so that that's that conversation, and that's important because when I'm on the left side, I want to make sure that I bring this head this way. I want to make sure that I bring this left dysfunction. That way, I know this is getting messy, and I want to get the hip going this way. And I want to do that to the best of my ability. And, and with in a two-sided adjustment, every side, um, one side has one perfect bend point that I will tell you that, that it's kind of like the knot on a balloon, in, and that's where it is on every patient. And that's a, so, so let me say that again. So every misalignment has a major cleat. Okay, that holds all the tension at one point in the cervicals. And, and I, can, I will show you where that is, because that is, if you're going to overcome the neurologic clock, you have to overcome that one, because that's primary. All the, uh, everything else is secondary. So that's, that's a mod two, mod three conversation, or the M doctor class that will happen. 
So the M doctors, which you are, um, you will have a conversation with me on the fascial pathways of those primary systems and those secondary systems. So you can go to those fascial lines and release them because you got to get it all, man. You can't just get the primary. You got to get it all. But while you're working on a side, you got to make sure that you don't compromise anything else. So the idea is to overcome, okay, and not to compromise anything while you're there, which is great. Okay, what concept? You know, a tensegal system that's collapsing to be able to identify it, okay, and then from the cervical area, understand where to restore it and not go against any of the friends or dysfunctions that may be damaged because it is damaged, okay? So, and, and that's a conversation of a global conversation that involves structure and neurology and gravitation and all the stuff that I just keep repeating to myself. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. You got it, brother. So, so yeah, that's a multifaceted conversation and you'll move through those conversations for sure. But, uh, you know, look at this is, this is a living system and we can't just sit there and say, listen, I'm just going to put an input into it. What I want to do is I want to be able to look at these posture listings and make, see it as deep as I see it today so that when I do something for that patient, I do it to support it, okay? Because there's only one thing it's trying to do, and that is trying to support itself, okay? And that involves the physical part of it and the energetic part of it. It's not a bone that's just shifted off and it's, you know, uh, you know, three sixteenths over here and, and, you know, four degrees over there. It's not that. It's a three-dimensional system that's been traumatized. And then when we go ahead and we put an input into it, guess what? I tell a patient two things, okay? They said, I said, you have a misalignment? And then I, I got you. I got you. Okay, how healthy are you? Okay. How much damage is in there? Okay, how weak is it? Okay. Do you exercise? Do you drink water? You know, what do you do? Okay, because it's a math game. It's a math game. Is that you have to be able to release this thing enough, and they have to be able to have the energetic power to be able to sustain what you do. And understanding, sometimes you go against something on the right, and guess what? You know, you, you, you're just somebody on the right, and they fall over on the left. Okay? And, and you got to understand that that may have been a great call, but that person can't handle it. So the conversation becomes, you know, this process of what QSM3 really is, is to be able to understand the tensegrity part of it and the biomechanics of it and the application of it, but then understanding how that person reacts. And that's bothersome to people, okay? That's bothersome. You know who it's bothered to? You know, I say some people. It's bothersome to the medical model because they're not looking at the human body and trying to support it. They're just trying to shut it up. And they wait to a point where it needs medical intervention, surgery. You know, every one of you has heard, you know, yeah, my doctor said that I got a bulging disc, but sent me to PT and, and he told me, you know, uh, don't do this, don't do that. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. So, so chiropractic, we have that same illness, unfortunately. You got this thing here and you got that thing there and they got this motion here and, and on the cool graph, you got a black over there and that hip is low over there and boy, you got a twist and, you know, your ankle is sore and, and that kind of stuff and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and we're not looking at a live system. Okay. And it has weaknesses. So the name of the game is to jump into tensegrity and then understand normal, how the body is, how it should respond normal in trauma. And then start getting in there and literally latching on to these lines that are attached to the spine and open the human body up through the cervical ranges of motion and expand it 
structure function and watch how the body responds and then try to support that and learn where the person is weak in this listing. What's weak in this listing? Is it the legs? Is it the pelvis? Is it the fixed point? Is it the shoulder? Is it the head? Is it the neck? Definitely not the head and neck. They're not postural. So you have to be able to look at that, and you got to be able to support the weak link last. Okay? So it is a continual process in my office of seeing what, the, what I have to support and what is now getting stable so that I can go and support something else. And that, that comes from the process of listening versus forcing. I used to say the atlas used to go here. The atlas needs to be here. And I am going to push it here. That's not what I do here. Now I, this person is compressing and locked up. The only thing I do is unlock it. I let it do what it's supposed to do after that. And then I watch the way it behaves after I unlock it, or I can't unlock it in certain places. I'm, it's not ready. I can't do it. I don't, just don't got enough power. I can't do it. Okay. So I, I now have a communication with a human, a human being, a live system. Seriously, I have a communication system. I put them on a machine, okay, that, that Ralph Gregory started – that I have, you know, advanced and made, you know, a little more 21st century, but we get to see the way the human body responds. And to me as a chiropractor, I can't understand that, that it's that, that we don't have these things. You got to have it. You got to have it. You got to help your patients. When somebody walks in the door, what do we do? And we say, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Okay. So we have to be able to understand how that body is communicating and how that body is talking to us. And the only way we do that is by some measurability. Okay. So, questions? Questions? Come on, man. Somebody give me one question. How do you know, how do you know what's weak? So you're talking about support the weak part last. Right. How do you determine what's, where the weakness is? You determine where the weakness is, is after you adjust something, you, make an, you, make, you release something, you make an adjustment, that the way that it responds, okay? No? Uh, I'll give you an example. I mean, How about I give you an example? Yeah, perfect. How about I do that? Let's go back to this one right here. Only we can go to a clean one, okay? Okay, here we go. All right, simple. Okay, so, so Jonathan, the first one is um, I go ahead and I adjust that person left side up, okay? And then I see that they have a right 18. They have a posterior 5 and a posterior 1 afterwards. Okay? What are you going to do? Right 18. Right 18. Yeah. Posterior 5, posterior 1. I'm going to flip them over to the other side. Absolutely. That's, I know you were going to do that. That's why I gave you the question, okay? <laughs> so then when you adjust them, okay, they go to uh, right 9, posterior 16, posterior 7. Okay. What are you going to do? I'm, I'm going to rest them 10 minutes and recheck it. Okay, and then what are you going to do if it's, Right nine, posterior 17, and posterior five. I'm going to realize that that left side, the right side can't 
can't handle it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to say, you know what? I'm going to flip you over, go back on the left, and I want to get this rotation out. And yeah. even though you've got weight, you're sitting up on top of yourself, and I'm going to see if your body can do with it your, itself. Okay? That's all you can do. And I'm going to, I'm going to charge him a little extra for that. Well, I'm going to charge you a little extra, actually, for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ruffles, do you pre- Go ahead. Ruffles, do you pre-stress that shoulder a little bit uh, into the anterior realm when you when you adjust? Yeah. So, 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 Dennis, I'm going to show you some some cool um, placement. Everything is really, you know, gotten. It's really simple to see this stuff. You know, after, you know, I bang my head against the wall, of course, and I'll keep saying that. I'm grateful for it, too, you know, because the game ain't over because this this thing is so complicated. But I, I start in it, it depends on what I'm what I'm doing. OK. And, and where I'm at. OK. Um, it, it just it depends if, if it's right side up is it is a little bit different placement than somebody that's left side up here. OK. And especially because we're going to move them on the headpiece uh, uh, based on, um, okay, so, so look at that big shoulder, say, say on right side up, okay? So I've got them right side up. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to come in from the posterior. Why? Because that posterior line uh, on that, that right side is really short, right? Say on right side? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... So I'm going to set that up to, um, because it's posterior and I'm coming posterior, I'm going to bring the chin back because that's going to help me with my range of motion. We're going to talk about these things. I'm just giving these now to you hear it. But I'm going to really come through that posterior portion of that trap and go right down through it and overcome that posterior line. Okay? Actually, so, actually if he's on the left side, isn't, there, isn't the right side anterior? Well, if I'm okay, if I'm on the left side, if on the left side, I'm going to come in anterior. Okay. If I want to go after that shoulder. But, uh, okay, I thought you said right side up, which would indicate to me, if we're looking at the right, the same thing, the uh, posterior 18. Mm -hmm. In that posterior 18 on the left shoulder. No, that's posterior 18 on the right shoulder. Oh. I I'm sorry, I'm sorry, because it's the weight okay. size. Wherever bad, we have bad. the weight, yeah, I'm, no problem. Yes. Wherever the weight is, is where we put, that's why there's those, those little commas in, in there, okay? Right. Because right. the, the weight yep. is, the, is the, uh, where we, where we uh, delineate the rotation of the shoulder and the pelvis. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, I see it now. My bad. Yeah, so, so, so the, 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 point, the point that you're going to, well, you know, <laughs> It's a, it's a little it's just a little bit longer conversation because the conversation of where this needs to be released, the placement, and the line of drive are a conversation that will happen in one conversation, and it's just too it's just too long here. That's why I keep stuttering with it. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Okay. We can we can hit it in October. Yeah, we will. Okay. Anything else? Hey, Russell. Yes. Rick DiGregorio. Hey. You could you? I don't see how you could start them any other way on this one, but from the left side because you'd be pushing, you'd be putting your forces down through the kink otherwise. Right. So if you if you look at this person, the way that it kind of cantilevers over, um, I I see two things that tell me left side up for sure. Um, just because I'm 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 I just high, I need to get you know high stuff up and out of there first, lift it up and out. And the, the most direct thing, obvious thing to do is is to go after that left fixed point. Everything's left over, left, 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 left. The other piece that tells me that that, that left side is failing is because of that right head tilt and the right neck. So, and then the shoulder. So to me, it's a no brain. I, I, I wouldn't even, it doesn't matter what the numbers are. This pattern is left side up first. Okay, it doesn't mean that the, now, Jonathan. If I adjusted this person left side up, and the numbers increased, okay, that's a good possibility. Okay, or the rotations don't come out because what I'm not doing is I'm not getting a direct relationship on that right side. 
So as I drive that thing, and I'm not a pusher, but it's a good way to see it that way. Imagine me pushing that person over on the left side, and their primary weakness was that right uh, below the pelvis, call it the legs. Yeah. And yeah. see what would happen is the whole thing would fall over even further, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you would get numbers like, oh, my God, it's right 18, right 22. Now, right. if the rotations got bigger, I would let them walk for a second. I'd get them back on there, and if they stayed there, it's collapsed over. But if those rotations were small – and the numbers just increased, I would definitely go rest them or go walk them a little further and stuff like that and see if it comes to center on its own. Because up is up, man, you know? Open is open. Sure. Okay. Anyway, so this brings me to my final conversation. And we're done. A little longer than I thought it would go is. Okay, so... um. My wife believes that I enjoy talking to myself. I want to let you know that's not true. Okay. I, um, I enjoy you guys being on here. I, I, I like this. I, you know, it's my life. I love it. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you, sh you should just make sure you come in October. Okay. You just let me put my hands on you and you can repeat that. And uh, you will have a practice of your dreams. So that's all there is to it. Okay. Um, chiropractic to me is alive. Okay. And I don't say that with a pun because the human being is alive. But I, I believe we're, we are that pulse. Okay. Why are we that pulse? Um, because I don't see anybody else having a conversation like we're having. Okay. And... Um, I know what happens in my office, and I'm comfortable with saying these things to you, okay, is on a weekly basis, patient, patient, patient. And believe me, guys, I don't help everybody. Amen, brother. Okay? I don't do that, okay? That's not my thing, okay? People have to help themselves first. But if they show up, they get phenomenal care, structural care from a person that sees it in a global way, and really, can, can, we can help people. We really can help people, okay? And if, you, if, if that, that is, to me, the best practice builder for you, okay? And it's not smoke and mirrors. Uh, it, 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 it once was for me. It was smoke and mirrors. It's not smoke and mirrors, okay? And we got a ton to learn. It's never ending. It is one complicated, crazy system. But we really got a good foot in the door. Okay, so um, for that to happen, okay, it has to for it has to happen for the profession. You have to show up. For it to happen for your patients, you have to show up. For it to happen for you to feel that joy, because I can't describe to you what it's like when I when I when I when I go through somebody's lock, man. When I let that, when I know that somebody lets go. The most unbelievable thing, man. It blows me away. It's like the greatest gift you could give to anybody and to yourself. Okay? So make some time for your practice. Make some time for it because I think uh, you will have a great time and uh, <laughs> I know you will actually. Okay? So anyway, I look forward to seeing you. If you have questions, all you got to do is put it up on the forum and ask the question. I don't have to be the only poster there. Okay? Anyway, I appreciate y'all coming out tonight. I hope I get to see you soon, and uh, enjoy your day. Thank you. See you later, Russell. Thanks, Russell.